What's up everybody, Kinetic here, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, in previous videos, I've been asking you guys which specialization you want to see next. And for a few videos now, it's been neck and neck between two specializations, Champion and Rift Mage. Now, I am doing a Champion build here, but I've got both of them totally ready, and all I need to do is put the videos together for you guys. The only reason why I guess Champion comes first is because I felt like I need a little bit more practice, a little bit more time to nail down sort of the, uh, the skill priority and stuff like that for Rift Mage. Uh, Champion is a little bit more straightforward, so that's why we're going to go with this first. As I was putting this build together, I thought to myself, is there such a thing as too much guard? No, there isn't. Now, in most cases, like in your average fight, even on Nightmare difficulty, you will probably have very much an abundance of guard that you don't necessarily need all of these skills. But I promise you, there are certain fights that are not all that far uh, apart, be it uh, certain rift encounters or bosses or something like that, and they are going to pound the crap out of you and you will be losing guard very very quickly. There's a lot going on here in the Vanguard tree. Let's take a look at that first. We've got Warcry, one of our big guard generating abilities. You taunt all nearby enemies with a shouted challenge, gaining extra guard for each enemy affected. The taunt lasts for about 4 seconds and you gain 20% guard per enemy. This has a cooldown of 24 seconds and costs 35 stamina. Charging Bull is that skill that it, I think pretty much every tank should have. Hell, even pretty much every warrior can make well use of having Charging Bull in their arsenal. You slam into your enemies, increasing your guard and knocking them down as you break through their lines. This ability has just so many fantastic things going for it. For one, it's a great mobility skill. Two, you can knock down and interrupt a lot of people. And of course, three, it actually does give you some guard in the process as well. Damage 200%, weapon damage, guard per enemy hit 10%, cooldown time of only 8 seconds. That is really, really small, and that means you can be very mobile with your tank or your warrior in general. This upgrade here, Gore and Trample, is an absolute must-have to get the most out of Charging Bull. After you finish your charge, your next ability costs no stamina. To the left of that, we have one of, I think, only two passives in the uh, the warriors skill trees that give them an increased uh, maximum guard. This here, untouchable defense, will add on to your maximum guard 25% more maximum guard that you can have. Further down the vanguard tree we have it'll cost you. Any foe that attacks you in melee is going to bleed for it, taking a portion of the damage they inflict. And down at the end, definitely one of the more important skills to pick up here in vanguard, unbowed. You focus on your defensive training, gaining guard for each nearby enemy. This is essentially war cry without the taunt, guard per enemy 10%. This has a cooldown time of 32 seconds. However, if you pick up the upgrade, still standing, unbowed further improves your guard for each nearby enemy, giving you the strength to stay on your feet. This is going to increase the guard generation bonus by 100%, making this a more powerful skill overall. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Battlemaster tree, and we're going to start with another very valuable skill for any tank, Grappling Chain. With a hook chain and a lot of muscle, you drag your target into arm's reach. This is going to deal 100% weapon damage, has a cooldown of 12 seconds, and a cost of 20 stamina. Further down, we're going to take a kind of not really necessary passive, but on the way to more important things, we have Hamstring. When you attack a target from behind, you leave them slowed. This isn't really going to help our tank out all that much, since we should have Taunt and Aggro uh, of all the enemies that they'll be facing us. But I suppose if there's that one case scenario where they do happen to turn around before you swing your weapon, then they'll be reduced by 50%. The point of going through that though is to get this passive in the next skill. Deep Reserves, you get your breath back faster than most. When your stamina is very low, it regenerates more quickly. Low stamina threshold of 50% and you gain stamina generation rate bonus of 50%. Very nice, this is going to help empower your skills and just keep you tanking and uh, shouting and doing all sorts of different things. 
And down here at the bottom, we're gonna take Warhorn. Your Warhorn's blast puts fear into the hearts of your foes, leaving them panicked. There's a lot of great ways that you can apply Warhorn in a fight, but uh, mainly I find that when I'm just full guard, I've got full taunt and everything is going right, I might as well blow Warhorn and just interrupt them and laugh in their face. This has a must-have upgrade, Break Their Spirit. Warhorn now shatters your enemy's guard, and panicked enemies are too shaken to defend themselves, leaving their armor sundered. Now the armor reduction is pretty cool, but what really gives this upgrade power is bonus damage against guard, 1200. This is going to come in handy, especially against dragons with guard or demons from the rifts that generate guard. It's just so incredibly powerful in those situations. It's a must-have. Alright, let's take a look at the champion specialization now. Pretty much everything here is a must-have, except for maybe the upgrade to Line in the Sand. Let me explain. You call upon the legacy of the greatest champions in history, defying enemies as you hold your position. This stops enemies from moving past you and enables you to block choke points. Yeah, there are certain situations I can see where Line in the Sand is, uh, is a powerful skill, but in most cases I find this to be really almost useless. It's a very situational skill I find and because of that I find no reason to upgrade it any further which isn't all that impressive of an upgrade either. It just increases the size of the line in the sand, the protection wall you could say, uh, by three meters. Again, yeah, it could be great for blocking choke points and stuff like that but there's so many fights that are just going to be in open ground where there's no way to even make a choke point. Uh, line in the sand is, isn't even something that I take. Thankfully, the rest of the champion line is very impressive. Let's start with the left-hand side. We've got Bulwark. You stand all the stronger to finish the fight, gaining a bonus to your maximum guard. This is the second of the two maximum guard bonuses I was talking about. Another 25%. Very nice. Continuing down from there, we have Adamant. You've trained hard and you know how to make the most of whatever armor you're wearing. This gives you an armor bonus of 20%, and it's going to lead us to the death. You taunt an enemy into a frenzy. Their damage output increases over time, but so does the amount of damage they take. The effect ends if you get out of range of the enemy. That's an important note to make there, that last part. Something even I forget from time to time. The effect ends if you get out of range of your enemy. That range is 15 meters, which is pretty generous. You don't necessarily have to be within butt sex range to uh, make sure that you're using this skill effectively. Enemy damage output increases by 5% per second. Enemy damage taken also increases 5% per second. I find that um, one of the, the times that I like to use to the death is when I really want something to die quickly. And um, because everybody in my party is going to be focusing on whatever target I'm focusing on, you can burn down uh, something that you want to die quickly, very quickly, using to the death. This has a very nice upgrade, Unguard. While To the Death is active, your guard improves as your target takes damage and you correct weaknesses of your own. Guard amount of 25% as they're taking damage. That's a really powerful upgrade. Alright, let's talk about the right hand side. We've got a great passive ability, Resilience. You don't flinch, don't blink, and don't back down. Enemies that hit you with melee attacks are staggered by recoil. This gives a stun chance on hit of 5% and stun duration of 2 seconds. Down below there, we have Unyielding. An attack that would bring you down instead leaves you with a small amount of health and you are immune to all damage for a short time. This is essentially a second life right here. If you are just nuked to oblivion, you will not fall. Thanks to unyielding, you will be invulnerable for five seconds after you survive whatever death blow that was, but you still only have a health threshold of 5%, so you need to make sure that within that five seconds that you heal up and get your guard back up. Down below that is probably one of my favorite active abilities from the champion line, Walking Fortress. You may not be able to hold them off forever, but right now, nothing can touch you. You have complete immunity to damage for a short time. Duration of 8 seconds. 8 seconds of no damage is fantastic. <laughs> it has a cooldown time of 32 seconds. 
This ability has a must-have upgrade, Siege Breaker. Every attack that strikes you reduces your cooldown times and increases your guard. So for every time something hits you, all of your cooldowns are going to go down by one second. Plus, you're going to get guard increased by 10% for every hit. In the middle, we have a very powerful focus ability, Counter-Strike. You push yourself to the limit, gaining full guard and taunting all nearby enemies. While the ability is active, you automatically counter all melee attacks. This is kind of like a, a marriage of Warcry and Walking Fortress combined here. At Tier 3, you have a duration of 20 seconds that all melee attacks will be completely deflected. The only way, of course, that this could get any more amazing than that is if it protected you from ranged as well. But if it did that, well, it would be pretty damn ridiculous. As it is, I think that the Counter-Strike is a very well-balanced and very effective focus ability. Let's take a look now at a couple of examples of how the Champion specialization makes the ultimate tank.
Thanks for watching this video on my champion specialization build here in Dragon Age Inquisition. These videos have been amazing to put together. I'm having lots of fun. I love the encouragement from the YouTube community, from the Reddit community. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It, uh, it really means a lot and it makes these a lot of fun to put together for you. Click the like button to support these Dragon Age Inquisition videos, and I'll keep them coming out as quick as I can. As I mentioned earlier, the next specialization video will be Rift Mage, but feel free to let me know in the comments what you want to see after that. Stay subscribed, more videos are coming up soon. Thanks again for watching, my name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time. for titsicles. Oh, that's good.